Can you beat Kotar 2 with just a plasma torch? My name is British Card Gaming and today I'm going to answer that question. The only rules of this playthrough is that my playable character can only use the first weapon you find, the plasma torch. Every other character can use them, uh, whatever weapon they want, but I can't use any other weapon or any aggressive force power. So to be doing this playthrough I'll be using a light sided character a consular so I can do the most healing so I have more survivability as you can see we'll be breaking out the, um, splitting up my stats the reason I did this is because Kotar 1 we always talk about the stun baton method you know only do it with that and how hard it is so I decided plasma torch let's see how hard this can be but uh, set up the consular female no reason I just never tend to play females on this game so I decided why not but today I'm only be doing the Paragus level because well, it takes a while and I really cannot be bothered with it to do it all in one so we should be naming our character any random generic name but one to remember is going to cause me a, a lot of pain yeah I'll name this let's go straight into the tutorial even though I decide nah I like that name for no reason. Skip the prologue because no one likes the prologue. And then to, to Paragus. Wake up in the cult of tank because you know, Cray decided it's wakey wakey time. Even though we sit in this scene for way too long and my skin is absolutely disgusting. I have no idea why it's like that. This game is modded far too much for a game that came out in 2004. But we twitch, we fall, the machine turns on, and we're up and about. And my eyes are open when I'm lying down. That is creepy. Anyway, looking at the disgusting skin, we move. It's Jesus, it is. My god, it's ugly. I don't know what I've done, but it needs fixing. Anyway, straight into it. Access everything. Open the log, and we can, can move on. Ugly skin, back again. Because why wouldn't it be back? And decided I want to look at this lab station. And then decided I want to look at it again. And a third time. After a while I finally learned to stop pressing that option and unlock the lab station's medical supplies. Lab station medical supplies? I'm smart. Open these canisters, I realise, yo, this one doesn't normally open at the back. Mods. But this will give me a helping hand considering this is going to go awfully. Run past dead Crayer and get our key weapon, the plasma torch. Kray decides to wake up herself after already telling me to wake up. She is a liar. I look at my ugly skin. I look at dead body. We have a quick chat because why wouldn't we have a nice lovely chat with Kray? Get some light side points because I need to be a good person and can't hurt anyone with anything else. Here it is, the moment of truth. Taking our big boy weapon and obviously equipping all the modded gear we just got and I've no idea why I put it on yet because it will make zero difference to my character right as we know if you don't know plasma torches one hit any door or any uh, storage thing like a locker so walk right through we get to our first fight and I realize this is going to be a long playthrough as it takes over three hits to get the droid down the easiest enemies in this game but then I realize oh, I can one tap them there's no consistency you run through find dead corpse open up the locker and realize oh more mods with a bunch of stuff I can't use which is obviously a hindrance Reading about how, you know, it's a mod that makes sense, there's more to it. But that's not why you're here, so, you know, oh, I'd like to move on a bit quicker. Finally got my first level up. 
and I've decided I've had enough of this fighting. So as soon as I walk through here, I'm just going to run to that administrator computer. And well, that's what I do. Shield on. Run straight through with such an ugly, ugly skin. But deactivate it and time to scuttle over to good old Atten. Who scratches his head. Cry as a fan for now because he's a tool and a fool. And for the first time ever, doesn't call me beautiful, and that makes me self conscious of my new skin, even though I walk slower than a snail. I let him go. And he decides, Let, let's run over. Oh, I really can't wait to get rid of that skin. Atten decides it's hacking time, and Atten decides he can't hack it. So, you know, being the the chad that I am with oh what an ugly neck now we discussed about how it's an issue and I decide beat bop it's my time to level up instead of continuing the story obviously persuade and treating so I can heal myself more and talk my way out of fights because we can't fight <laughs> all the unusable force powers from another mod which hurts but I go force aura for some unknown reason to me. Then we're T3. We get into a lovely fight where I can use. I have free reign. I can do what I want. I can actually zap things. But then I realise I froze. Because the game's modded and things are broken. And then I go into another fight. And I froze. And there was a pattern here. After every fight in this area, I would freeze. But in this area, I was perfectly fine. Walked over, got into another fight, not having to use the plasma torch, which was delightful. But, uh. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend this playthrough, it's not fun. Considering we're already seven minutes into the video and I'm barely anywhere relevant. Being able to use grenades for once because I don't have to use the plasma torch, and I can actually move after a fight. Got hit with a clap, got hit with a clap again, hit with a zap, then got hit with a froze. Went to go see my sad boy here. The Ebon Hawk. I don't know how to see to keep this scene in. It's just a lovely cinematic for no reason. But we go along our day. Zoom up to computer and decide to open some lockers. Even though I can no longer bash them open instantly. Which makes me sad. Even though they are completely worthless. Well, see, so you can see what's going to come up after we do this. Because we're still in the same area where I freeze after every battle. So, after a battle, well, I froze. And then, well, I froze again. This took a lot longer than it needed to. Purely from the freezing. And, well, I froze. But it's the last time I froze. And then I got hit with the Nay Nay, as they put it. And then I was frozen permanently. My skin was as ugly as ever, as me and Atom were just casually chatting, waiting to die. And, you know, he insults me. And I spend far too long looking at his choice option, and I just decide, ah, oh, I'll pick it eventually. For some reason, the computer beeps for some unknown reason. And then Atom tells me how I'm an idiot for having such a stupid plan. And then I have to be nice to him, and I can't tell him to shut up, so I have got to listen to his soppy tips and advice. I got clothes. And got annoyed by, well, by clothes. Which shows, he may, maybe he did like me, even though he didn't make the angel comment up before. 
I decide I'm going to beef up this droid for no reason, knowing I don't have enough parts and I've wasted my time. But I still pursue with it anyway. And I no longer have to look at the ugly skin. And whilst fighting in this, you know, the mining area, I realised, holy shit, I'm not going to be able to do this. So I decided it's sprinting time. And I do more sprinting. Search a corpse. Get attacked from the back. Slice the computer for some unknown reason. Decide not to slice the computer. And actually, now that he's alone, I'm going to fight this one droid. But I miss. And then I realise, oh, it's going to be a long fight. Because all the animations look the same. And I just keep missing. And missing. This was a very boring fight. This is what every fight looks like that you don't see. They're just this slow and long. But back to the computer. I decide. Go. It's big brain time. Everything starts. Killing each other. And that way I get all the XP anyway. Without having to do any of the hard labour. <laughs> But I stand here and watch for a little bit, you know, bask in my glory, in my achievements, seeing things blow up in the background, it, it's nice, it's a nice feeling. I've watched this for far too long, I know, but the game's the game. And I discovered this area I'd never found before. No, I don't know if it's part of a mod or if it's always here, but there was a heavy blaster. That, that intrigued me because I'd never seen it before. Intrigued me so much, I decided I'm actually going to hold a weapon that I can't use for a bit. So I'm like, I've never seen this before. And well, that's all I could do with it, and I quickly put the torch back in my hand. Because I think nothing beats a plasma torch in Kotar 2. We do one big roly poly, see a dead man, look at dead man, angry robot comes round, says greetings calls me master and I promptly decide no. Obviously I knew the droids behind this door so you gotta prep for these things because you can't fight. Got hit with a grenade but for some reason if you learn you can't hit the floating ones. That's something I learned. Floating droids cannot be hit with a plasma torch which makes any droid that floats impossible to kill. Also, was getting blasted during the cutscene, but ran past everything because I can't fight them all. Destroyed the turret. The turret? Can't. Because a plasma torch is the only thing you need in this game. Don't need to hack it, you just need to bash it. Obviously, running through the mines, I run to the wrong locker, get visibly confused, and then go to the right one. And then it's outside time. Gliding through here very elegantly. As the gas does no damage for absolutely no reason. Atten calls me a mong for going outside and is confused, and a big ship comes, and we decide let's stand still and watch it. I quickly run back in, go back in again, decide I can actually fight this one. Realise the corpse is now stood up in a T pose position, which is slightly terrifying. Open the door and decided sprinting time. For some reason I also didn't freeze even though the X came up to my name and then I froze. And then I got hurt because I kept being froze. Then I stood still. And then I got froze again. But at least this freezing is part of the game and not like it was with T3. But I was running out of force powers quickly and running out of space to run. And my health was rapidly falling. I decided I'm going to do the good old trick of open rimbetry and actually use a med pack in there. A lovely tip if no one knew that. You can just open your inventory and equip your med pack. But my guy, well, she was leaning. She was weak. But I got through, bashed the console again. And then, boom, the witch decided she can walk. And decided, yep, we've got to go even though she couldn't sense these flashy boys behind us. 
and then, you know, as we see Adam, he gets confused, jinxes us, and then Big Metal Boy returns with his boom boom boxes. We hit him, he decides blow up time, and I leave Cray to die. If you couldn't tell, I do none of the damage on this team. I let Ant take the charge, and we're now in the Harbinger. We have a lovely conversation, and I decide, well, Ant's my boy, and you can't get good influence with Cray anyway, so fuck her. And then, more light side points. I was going to stop here, but I decided, well, no one wants to see this. So I got frozen at the computer. And that took far too long. But we got the codes, and got into our first fight. And I decided, I'm not part of this fight. And then Kraya, well, she comes and she steals my kill. Atten says, we go decide to talk about my fucking room that I'd remembered even though I have a whole room, even though I'm a nobody from the outer rim get a band, obviously slap that bad boy on and we keep running through skip the whole area because it is pointless Ant says he's got a bad feeling his bad feeling was obviously correct Freya decides she's going to fight this bad feeling with a sword she pulled out of somewhere and we move on so I decide it's slicing time for Kraya. Kraya collapses. I collapse. We find a walking bin. When our subtitles break, we remove the big purple glowy shield. We bash these boys. And when I say we, I bash this one boy as Atten and T3 destroy everything else. And yes, I can see them shooting at it and knowing they killed it instead of me, it hurts. But we move on. We run, we find the gassy room. Instead of hacking it, we use the good old plasma torch and hit it with the old bash. It unlocks very slowly, and then we get gassed before we're even the gas. Run through the gas, hit the door with the bash, and move on until the Ebon Hawk, and we leave. For some reason the game asks if I want to leave, of course I want to leave. Then we shoot some silver surfers, because they want to get on our ship even though we can see them spawning in the corner. Kraya arrives somehow, even though we didn't see her while shooting them metal boys, and the harbour unit makes the rocks go boom boom, and it all blows up, but somehow this ship isn't destroyed. They're in hyperspace, Atten calls us an idiot, and that he was safer locked in a cell. Because Cyan decides he wants to eat us for breakfast because that's what he does. Kraya says he's a fool and leaves. And well, I'm told to follow her. So I speak to her. She doesn't like that. I lose influence with her because that's just what you do in this game. I meet one rusty boy. We decide to repair him. And that was the end of the first fucking map on Paragus. I have no idea why I swore, but that is it. Thank you for watching and goodbye.